Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, my name is uh, Brother Mark Howling. I'll be conducting today. Welcome to the services today for Sister Anne Marie Wilderness. We express appreciation on behalf of the family to all of you who are in attendance today. <clears throat> and prior to these services, a family prayer was offered by Sister Sandra Hudson, a sister. The uh, pallbearers are Brother Michael Hudson, Christopher Cheadle, Anthony Giorgio, James Tibbetts, Hayden Tibbetts, Joshua Wilderness, Bryson Wilderness, and Darren Tibbetts. We also express appreciation today to our organist, Sister Robinette Jensen, and our chorister, uh, Sister Karen Hoffman from the Hyde Park First Lord. We will begin our services today by uh, singing the hymn, I Am a Child of God, um, after which the opening prayer will be offered by Rebecca Kelly, a daughter.
Oh dear, kind gracious of my father. You thank you for this day and all the rain that all the arrived to gather here. So great to watch my mother. <laughs> The book of Alma, verse 40, chapter 40, verse 23, talks about restoring a wife to perfect body. We will see you again, Mom. Lord, please bless everybody that is in here. And thank everybody who made the trip. Thank you for the wonderful life of my mom. She was wonderful. She bless all the speakers and everybody else if they are able to perform and do what they need to do. Thank you for a few more directors in the church that everybody has been able to come together as a family to celebrate the awesome life of my mom and what we're not. In the name of my son, Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah. Oh, that was tough. Thank you, Rebecca. We will now hear a life sketch tribute by uh, Leora Peterson, the daughter. Following that, we'll have a music, musical selection, More Than Enough, performed by uh, Sister Susie Tibbetts and accompanied by Heather Wilderness. And then we'll have a speaker, uh, Brother Larnell Tibbetts. And we'll go to that part of the program. Good morning. I'm Leora Peterson, eldest daughter of Anne Wilderness and her first husband. I've been blessed with the opportunity to share just a little of my mom's life with you. This is challenging to say the least. And yes, I am the one responsible for her love of hair. <laughs> Anne Marie Weidinger, my mom, sister, aunt, grandmother, and friend, grew up with loving parents. Her father was a traveling shoe salesman. Who once brought a kitten home at the end of his route? Her mom said he'd have to take it back, but once he returned to that part of the route, she was unwilling to part with it. That started my mom's love of animals. After a stint on a kid's show in Ohio called Uncle Jake's House, think of a young Annette Funicello with dimples, she went on to high school. She played trombone in the band on the weekends and enjoyed drag racing down State Street before it was illegal. <laughs> After high school, she secured a full ride scholarship at beauty school. A year later, she was swept off her feet by my father, Dwight Joseph. After giving birth to a son, my brother Richard, and a wonderful daughter, they divorced. A few months later, she heard a knock on her door. Two handsome young men in white shirts and ties with name tags were soon invited inside. Thus began the next chapter of her life. At a church singles event, she met a funny, goofy, but good-looking guy. He saw her dimples and was smitten. This was, of course, Charles Wilderness, an eternal wed or eternal marriage in the Washington, D.C. temple, preceded the birth of three more children, Rebecca, Susanna, and Joshua. After living her first 40 years in Ohio, it was time for new adventure. Wyoming your bus, said the sign on the back of the U-Haul. More adventures can be told occurred in Wyoming. 
some of mom's favorite times were when Charlie would take her on trips in a semi. They covered so much territory, saw so many wonderful sights, and had a few mind mishaps. But the memories they created were priceless. She spent almost 20 years whining and raising her children to occasionally include Charlie. Once the kids had grown and moved out, Anne and Charlie were invited to Logan to visit Susie. And once invited, they never left. Anne's decline into dementia was slow at first, but noticeable, especially to Susie's children. Addison, her daughter, coined the name Grandma Cuckoo, and Anne loved it. Charlie's love of model trains earned him his nickname, Grandpa Choo Choo. So Grandpa Choo Choo and Grandma Cuckoo they were. The remainder of my talk will be in mom's own words, taking from what Susie and I have come to call the dementia diary. I will start with her testimony, which she bore often in her diary. February 22nd, 2018. I would like to bear my testimony to anyone who reads this. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the one true church on the face of the earth. I know that Prophet Russell M. Nelson is the true head of this church on the earth. I believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. I don't understand it completely. I have dementia, but I'm doing my best. My mother had dementia before me. Mom and dad knew of my faith in Jesus Christ, and I hoped I was able to plant some seeds in their hearts so we can all be reunited in the life to come. I thank my Heavenly Father for everything, for the miracles I've witnessed, the healing power that has relieved Charlie from pain, that Ray Dillinger and his wife Kelly have also been relieved from their cancers. I pray for Sheila Field and Diane McIntyre that I will see them in eternity. She was always worried about those, she always worried about and loved others as she was loved. I pray for President Munson, Alex, Susie, and all her family, Charlie, Sheila, Sonia, Mary, Donna, Irene, Kasten, Brene, Donna, Bob, Jacob, Jennifer, David, who's with us today, Chris, Greta, and myself, especially to get my brow and teeth. I pray for the Dillinger's and everybody. Heavenly Father knows my thoughts. Amen. June 26, 2020. Kelly Anderson stopped at my room to say goodbye. She said she'll try to come see me with her new boyfriend. I just can't get over the CNAs to come to see me and tell me they love me. I guess my decision to be nice to everybody is paying off. I don't know how to be mean, my goodness. Elizabeth just came in to tell me goodbye. She's going to Salt Lake to go to school. She told me she loves me. I have never felt so loved. My family loves me, but so many unfamily too. Of course, living in a nursing home did make for some interesting stories. July 18th, 2017. During Relief Society today, a brother who was married to Marie, who was pretty and pink, stood up and bore his testimony and said some very sweet things about his wife. He also said he didn't know whose clothes he was wearing. I believe they were his. She was particularly concerned for the well-being of one specific young man who was dear to her, a CNA named Alex. July 4th, 2017. I pray for President Munson and for dear sweet Alex to accept the missionaries, and I hope they find him while traveling. July 13th. I pray for all the missionaries in the field, especially for the missionaries while traveling who will find Alex's home and who will invite them in to his abode, and they will present the discussions in a way that will be that will help Alex to eventually join his church. August 1st, I pray for my friend Alex and the missionaries who will find him a teacher. I hope that the date he had went well. Trust me, I didn't read all the Alex's. There's a lot. August 10th, I do pray for Alex that he might be found by a missionary to accept the gospel. I pray for Eileen that she will not yell at me anymore for taking bananas into my room. <laughs> August 12th, I pray for President Munson, Alex, Charlie, me, all missionaries, emphasis on the Briners and the two who will knock on Alex's door. August 14th, 
I pray for Alex that he will one day before I die accept the missionaries who will walk up on his door. Thank you for the great sleep I've been having. Please let it continue. More later, perhaps. Then read the book of Mormon. August 18th. I pray for Alex to accept the missionaries when they knock on his door. I also pray that he will find some happiness with the next girl. August 28th. Met two sister missionaries today who I wish could happen upon Alex and take, teach him the gospel. I will write my letter. Alex, are you here? If anybody knows Alex, for the love of mom, please get some missionaries to him. <laughs> Mom tended to be a bit feisty at times, as you all know. July 22nd, 2017. Sheila and I raided the refrigerator and took hard ice cream, yogurt, pudding, and some soda to teach me a lesson. God made sure I didn't sleep at all that night. I did take a soda today. I hope he doesn't do it again because I will never take anything again without asking first. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Her favorite partner in crime, though, was her daughter, Susie. They would get the hair and nails done every Wednesday, always being sure to stop by Chuck's for her to make a diet cook and sugar cookie. Living in a dementia facility was never an easy thing. June 9th, 2019. Yesterday, just before lunch, resident Becky with a pretend dog passed away. I must remember to wear earplugs. Boyd wanders at night and it's very loud at 7 a.m. June 23rd. Boyd passed away last night. I am sorry I yelled at him when he opened my door, but it frightened me. I wish I were more like Susie. She is so loving and so nearly perfect. She is just undescribably nice. My sister Susie has traveled a tumultuous journey in the past many years, being an incredible wife and mother and loving daughter to my mother Anne. Even in the depths of dementia, mom knew and recognized this. April 14, 2019. I am totally blown away by Susie. She has so much love and sense of spirituality. I wish I could have just half the caring and doing what is right and love for others that she has. She works so diligently on ministering to family, friends, and acquaintances. I don't know where Susie got that. Mom had written down a quote. What will you remember when you look at everything? She remembered that she was loved. Anne Marie Widener Joseph Wilderness, you've lived a beautiful, full, loving life. Having had the privilege of being your daughter and reading your journal, I am humbled by your beautiful spirit. My only hope is I can follow in your footsteps. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Lauren Pivots, and uh, I've been asked to talk about Anne a little bit. <clears throat> Anne Wilderness. She enjoyed family dinners. We tried to have a family dinner at least once a week, and she really enjoyed uh, talking about her family and her, her loved ones. She enjoyed the birthday parties that, that we always had. On family campouts, uh, we had the opportunity to rent a cabin up, the, up about 10 minutes up Logan Canyon. And, um, my father and mother in law made it possible. And we've had some really enjoyable times. And it was always enjoyable to invite Ann and Charlie to come up. They wouldn't sleep over and camp out with us, but they would come up the next morning to breakfast and enjoy the family. <laughs> so we look back at yeah, kids. I remember one time my, my son-in-law, Louise, his uh, mother and dad was in town. And they was able to come. And this the stepdad went out and caught a fish for everybody there. And there's nothing like having fresh fish right out of the river, right into a crunch after breakfast. And that was one of Anne's favorite meals. She commented how nice that was. That makes it important to our heavenly father as well. He wants us all to be happy to be together forever as family. <sighs> The restored gospel of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saint, Latter Saint, is very important to her. 
and she was so happy to have it be part of her life. It changed her life for the better when she let Jesus Christ into her heart. With God's authority, she had been married for time and for all of eternity, not just till death be part. How sad it would be if it all ended at death. In Matthew, they were trying to trick the Savior and they asked him this question, Master, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise his seed up to his brother. Now there was with this seven brothers, and the first, when he was married, the wife, she deceased, having no issue, left his wife to his brother, and likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And the last, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be in the seventh? For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures and the power of God. For in the resurrection, neither marry, neither are they married or given in marriage, but are angels of God in heaven. And in Matthew, it also teaches that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Um, I will give it to you, telling Peter, I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Yeah. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on heaven shall be here loose down. Or whatsoever you shall seal on earth in heaven, seal in heaven, whatsoever you shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And my name, by my word, saith the Lord, it shall be eternally bound in heaven. How sad it would be to be together, this man and wife, but then only be able to be angels. I love my life with all my heart. We've had many challenges in our 40 years of marriage. We have a wonderful family. And how sad it would be if it was a fellow woman our Heavenly Father loves families and He wants us to be able to be together forever as families. Satan's whole goal is to destroy the family and to make us sad. We also learned in the Bible that <clears throat> there were also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. And the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's one glory of the sun Another glory of the moon. Another glory of the stars. For one star differed from another star in glory. Also is the resurrection of the dead. Also in Corinthians, we learn about what righteousness is. And Anne was definitely a righteous woman. Pureness. Knowledge, long suffering, kindness by the Holy Ghost, love unfriended. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness. For behold, this life is a time for men to prepare to meet God. Behold, the day of this life is the, by, is the time for men to be born married. Now concerning the state of the soul, between death and resurrection. Behold, it has been nicknamed known unto me the book of the prophets, saying by an angel, that the spirits of all men, as soon as they depart from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they are good or evil, are taken home to that God that gave them life. I wrote this out so many times, I, I've got so many notes of hard to find. Into <clears throat> the 
age, the age old questions, where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going after this life is over? We came from heaven, according to the Bible, God said, hey, young earth and matter and organized. Let's organize it into an earth where we can, we can have all the spiritual of heaven Father go down and have a, gain a body like he had. He wanted us to have a body and have the same experiences that he had had. Why am I here? We are here to learn for ourselves by our own experiences. We have our free agency to choose our lives and what will be, but we are not free from the consequences of our choices. If you choose to rob a bank and you go get $100,000 in the bank, you just go home and enjoy it yourself. No, the consequences are that they're gonna come knock on your door, they're gonna make you pay for the, what you did, and then you have to spend some time uh, for what you did wrong. When I was a scout master, we would take the kids out to hire them down and jump off the cliffs. And when you run and jump off that cliff, you can't say, oh, it's too late. I wish I didn't. I wish I hadn't done that. It's too late. You made the decision. You made the choice. And now you have to prepare for the consequences. <laughs> um, when you go to the cliffs and you look straight over the edge, there's sand down there. If you just jump off the edge, you're going to break off your legs. You have to run and jump really hard. And it is quite enjoyable and fun when you hit the water the correct way. If you hit the water with your arms like that, oh, you are going to hate life. And if you don't point your toes, your feet are going to hurt so bad. But there are consequences to the choices we make. In today's world, people treat the commandments as they are just suggestions and pick and choose the ones they like. They live the doctrines of man and not of God. God wants us to be happy. He gave us commandments to keep us free from sin. If we are not happy, we are following the wrong person. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and wretched, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, gave the spirits of all men, whether they good or evil, taken home to their God that gave them life. And then it came to pass that those of the righteous had received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where one shall rest from all their troubles, from all their cares and sorrows. If you want true happiness in your life, learn all you can about Jesus Christ. He's the only sinless man that ever lived. Learn to love him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then follow me. He was asked, which is the greatest of all the commandments in the law? And he replied, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. And second, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written on the earth. It is a gift from our Heavenly Father to guide us back to Him. The Book of Mormon is a second witness of Jesus Christ that he lives, that he loves us. Through God's prophets, the church has been restored upon the earth. The same church that Jesus brought the first time has been restored. And with it, all the blessings of eternal life and the promises that he can give us. We have the same authority to be sealed on earth. As it is in heaven, so. <clears throat> and lived a good life and is now in paradise, waiting on the resurrection. When she will be joined again with her love. So till then, Ed, we'll meet again. May God bless and keep you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Thank you to all who have participated so far. Uh, following my remarks, the, uh, we will sing a closing song, Popcorn Popping, which I understand is a favorite of uh, Sister Anne. And the closing prayer will be offered by uh, Charles Wilderness and his husband. Interment will occur at the High Park Cemetery uh, immediately following. Uh, and then following the graveside service, we invite family and friends to return here to the building uh, for a, a luncheon. <clears throat> we express, express appreciation to all those who have uh, helped in the services today for the First Ward of the New Society, as well as the Elders Quorum, and, and many others who have brought flowers and done other things to, uh, for the family at this time. <clears throat> I am, uh, I don't want to take too much time today. I know that you uh, didn't come to hear me, but I feel honored and humbled for the opportunity to make a few remarks at the conclusion of this tribute to my sister Anne-Marie Wilderness. I've been thinking of what I might say to each of you at this time that would be encouraging and not detract from what has already been spoken and the music that has been, that we have heard and that has been sung. I feel that I'd be remiss if I did not direct my brief remarks to the marvelous plan of happiness and the strength and comfort that is ours through the atonement of our Savior Jesus Christ. I appreciate the, the words of uh, Brother Tibbetts just before me who also addressed this. President Russell M. Nelson referred to our lives in terms of a three act drama. Act one consists of our lives as spirit children of our Heavenly Father prior to our birth. During this act, it was clear that in order to progress, to learn, and to increase in experience, we would need to leave his presence and receive a physical body. Act two consists of our mortal lives here, where our spirits uh, are given a physical tabernacle in which to dwell. Act two is surely the shortest of the three acts. It contains significant pain and suffering but also gives us unmatched opportunities for happiness and joy. Many opportunities for both pain and joy come to us through our life in families. Children, teens, adults, wife, husband, mother, father, grandparent, friend, many of these give us experience in our lives. And from what I've heard today, it sounds as if Anne's life was filled with family experiences. Just as Act Two began with the joining of our eternal spirits to our physical bodies, the curtain closes on this act with the separation of our spirit and our body. Physical death is essential to God's plan. However, <coughs> That doesn't mean that it will be easy to understand or to accept. It also is wrought with uncertainty. The prophet Job posed the following question. If a man die, shall he live again? I have pondered yet again today that question. The answer is a resounding yes. The scriptures, both ancient and modern, testify in this truth and the resurrection for all. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 teaches, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The prophet Alma taught, Now this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but everything shall be restored to its perfect frame. Act three, then, 
will result in the reuniting of our spirit with a perfected body. The act continues with the merciful judgment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a receipt of a glorious reward. This is all possible because of the life, atonement, death, and resurrection of our Savior. I testify of this great and infinite atonement. Because of him, we can have hope in our lives and a faith in the next one. Because of his atonement, we will all live again. Because of him, our current afflictions, infirmities, weaknesses, and imperfections, sorrows, heartache, and grief are overcome. Because of his atonement, we can choose to live righteously and receive a great reward, even eternal life. President Nelson teaches us, irrespective of age, we mourn for those we loved and lost. Mourning is one of the deepest expressions of pure love. It is a natural response in complete accord with divine commandment. Thou shalt live together in love, insomuch that thou shalt weep for the loss of them that die. Moreover, we can fully appreciate joyful reunions later without tearful separations now. The only way to take sorrow out of death is to take love out of life. As we mourn today the loss of a loved one due to separation from this life, we can be comforted to know that in due time, God shall wipe away all tears and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. It is my prayer that each and every person here today feels the love of our Heavenly Father. I testify of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. things that weren't written in her diaries. When I was young, good looking, skinny, and we met in Bluffton, Ohio at Bluffton Conference. I walked around the corner and I saw my wife. It was beautiful to both She talked to her friend that was with her. She said, Who is this guy? Is he for real? 
And that's because I was wearing my shorts and my my favorite shirt at that time, that blue ribbon. And, and we just loved each other so much. There was times we didn't show up. There was always more that we Oh God, your heavenly Father, we are asking you to welcome and we do our partners. And please bless her and give her her young body back. And I am so good to her. To so good, I say this evening with Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.